Alright, what's up? What's going on guys? Captain Monk here. In today's game, playing some Broloff in the top lane. So let's go ahead here and grab ourselves. I'm thinking of Flask just because, of course, it'll allow us to sustain through the lane phase pretty easily. And I won't get any items just yet because I'm not sure exactly what I want yet. And I'm thinking, uh, I think I was playing with... Yeah, give me your milk playing last game. Uh, sorry, I'm getting kind of sidetracked, but uh, I want to do either a double jungle or a wolf's start. And as far as I know, he doesn't know how to double jungle and... I mean, as silly as that is, it is the truth, and if someone doesn't know how to do it, then you probably shouldn't, but for those of you who don't know what double jungling is, it's something that's very, very popular right now, whether it's high elo, normals, competitive play, it's just, it's really, really good, and you should be doing it, and essentially what you would do is you would start at the top side of the map, whether it's at the Gromp or at the Krugs here, and you'd work your way down. Uh, the reason for that, of course, is because you want your bot lane to take the Gromp or the Krugs, which a lot of players in lower elo won't do, but in high elo they do. Uh, and so you would start the top side and you would double jungle with your teammate So your top and your jungler of course the tank the top winner would tank pretty much everything and They would get the small one the jungler gets the big one then you do the buff so blue or red and of course same thing the top winner gets the little ones the uh, Jungler gets the big ones or the big one I guess in that case being the buff and once you have shared XP on literally everything there so the gromp or the Krugs and then the buffs you then base as the top laner or you keep going and with the as, as a jungler you didn't use any potions so you're full health and you're all set and if you're the top laner you go base because you're probably low by then you get a bunch of extra items and tp to lane and you maybe miss like three four minions top lane but you gank just as many in the jungle and you have a level two and you have all these items so huge power spike so it's a really good thing to do but uh, Fizz is not doing it this game, which makes me feel kind of silly, but I'm just going to lap my Q here so I can hit all three and pace back and forth so I can constantly spam it. And of course, just spam all my flasks so I can sustain through this very easily. And you can see what I'm trying to do here, because of course, you can't just stand on spot very easily with Olaf anymore and toss your axe on the floor. You kind of have to go back and forth like I have been. But you can see how quick and easy it is to take the wolves. We can go back here. You can see I got 300 gold now. Uh, I could go with cloth armor, I could also go with boots. I think I'm just going to get a ton of potions, like five potions. Uh, let's get um, two mana potions, and let's also grab a green ward here. Oops. And TP to lane. And with all this sustain, I mean, it might be kind of dull, but Fiora went with Longsword and three potions, so she's going to get way out sustained by an insane amount, and that's going to be awesome. So what I'm going to be looking to do here is last hit with my Q when I need to, but only use it to harass Fiora if I'm not going to push the wave, because I do not want to push, and use my E whenever she comes close, and I can harass her with that as well. Like, oh, never mind. I was going to hit her on the head with my axes, but that's not going to happen, I guess. But yeah, the wave's going to push towards me, it looks like. So, should be good for me. And there we go. Pushed that one minute and hit her with the axe. And that's going to allow me to freeze pretty easily here. And I'll get those two. Actually, I only got the one, but that's okay. Can I hit her on the head? I can't hit her on the head. You can see the tree damage showing off how good it is. And that minion just juked my axe. That sucks. But let's put a second point to the queue here. Let's go ahead and just continue clearing the minions out. And my Siege minion is weaker than theirs, meaning the wave's going to push towards me, so this is very nice for freezing. If you're at level 3 now, should be all set, though. And yeah, if she comes close to me, I'll hit her over the head again. Hitting bitches over the head is what Olaf is all about. And she blocked a few of my hits, actually, but that's okay, because she's walking to my minion wave, so the minions should trade back for me, making it even. And actually, we have Fizz coming up for a gank. I'm going to toss an axe her way, slowing her down. And I'm not going to go too far, because the mini wave is there, and she would just kill me if I went too far. But I will slow her here with the axe, and never mind, I won't. I'll hit over the head, though, and I'll let Fizz clean up. He should have that, hopefully. Yep, he's got it. Nice, first blood. And I got the assist, so that's really solid. And I'll just freeze here, because of course I could push out, but it'd be pretty tough to. And I have all the sustain, so I may as well just sustain up and have this XP lead and take advantage of exactly that. So I'll just freeze here for, like, ever. <laughs> And kill Fiora when she comes back, maybe. And I accidentally hit the wrong minion there. She's TPing to a minion right next to me. So she's going to be having a longer cooldown on her teleport. So instead of four minutes, it's now five. Get her over the head, bitch. And I should be able to survive this. Yeah, she doesn't have flash. And I'll just pop all my potions here and stand at turret. She's already low as is, so she can't dive me. She took an axe to the face. And Fizz has come back, so we're pretty much all set here. I'll use my W for that extra bit of lifesteal. Gonna hit her over the head. No, I cannot. But Fizz is still coming around. He's pretty low, though, so this might be a little bit tricky. She's going to block a lot of our stuff, actually. But I'm going to get the red buff, actually. So, yeah, that kind of sucked. It didn't go as well as I would have liked. But I managed to have the red buff now and the kill. So Fiora's going to get the kill from Fizz. So that's not good, but Fizz does down. Yeah, overall, uh, you can you can argue either way. We can argue, oh, hey, buff transfer complete. But you also can argue that in a 2v1 scenario, she managed to pull something out. So... Yeah, it really goes out of the way, but her teleport is down, so I'm going to try and shove out here and make her miss as much as possible, then go base. 
And I've pretty much used all my sustain that I've got anyways, so may as well. And one cool thing to keep in mind when you're playing Olaf, that is kind of off topic, but I may as well mention anyways, is your E, if it kills the target, you actually refund. Uh, yeah, the, but the cost is refunded if it kills the target. You can see there at the very end of that paragraph there, so... Killing units with, like, last hitting minions, for example, with your E is not too bad of a plan. Uh, other things, keep in mind your Q. This is actually something that's really highly debated, and I want to make sure it's very clear why I don't do this. People are probably going to say in the comment section at some point, because they're probably going to ignore me saying this, but just to make sure it's clear for those of you who are listening right now. Yes, if you run over your axes, you will lower the cooldown by a significant amount. But, in a lot of cases, running around, trying to catch your axes, is going to lower your total damage output because you're running around instead of hitting people. So in a lot of cases, relying on your cooldown reduction to have the axe up more often instead of just picking it up to reduce the cooldown is a better way to go. Because that way, you're not worried about, uh, of course, just walking around and not accomplishing anything. Now, I've got this red buff still, so I can zone out this Fiora very easily. So I'll toss axes into her butt as often as I can. But it's not going to be the easiest task in the world. But she's going to walk up to me here. So I'll just get some auto attacks off. And I'll pop my ultimate here. And just run at her. And use as much damage to her as I can. And look at that. You can see the damage output coming from out that Ragnarok. And she doesn't have her ultimate available. So she just gets completely destroyed. And her ultimate is still... Or not her ultimate. Her teleport is still down. So I'll shove the wave in once again. And then make some roaming plays of some sort. Shove the wave in. And of, of course I'm maxing the Q first. Uh, I didn't mention this. But I feel like I should... Uh, in my previous Olaf video that I did him in the top lane, I think early season 4, like the preseason, when the trinkets were just being released, uh, I maxed E first, and that was pretty bad. For, I mean, it worked in that lane, but it shouldn't have, because it was a karma lane, which is really strange. But, uh, yeah, e, E's not, like, it, it can work against melee targets, especially people who are stack a lot of armor, but Q is better, because its damage is pretty similar. I mean, yeah, it's not true damage, but it's still pretty similar as far as base damage goes. And to add on to that, it's AoE, so it's hit at multiple targets, and it's ranged, so you can do it from a distance. So if you fall from behind, having that Axe Max is going to help you out a lot, because, of course, you can do it from a distance and not have to be right in the fight to do damage. So a lot of benefits to maxing the Q first. And then you max the E second, because the W is basically a one-point wonder. Uh, for those of you who don't know what a one-point wonder is, one-point wonder is basically a spell that you just need one point into, and you're all set. That's all you really need is that one point, because once you have that one point in the spell, it's solid. And yeah, putting more points to it does help. It's not like it's bad, but it's not necessary. And that's pretty much what a one point wonder spell is. So that's what this is for Olaf on his W. Not necessary to max at all. Max that last. And I'm trying to hit her with the side of these axes while I clear the wave out a little bit, but I'm not doing the best job of that. But I can probably kill her again pretty soon here if I choose to. But I'm kind of low on mana, and it is quite risky because she's level 6. And if she plays it right and gets all of her... Uh, vitals going on that I'm going to have a really hard time. So I'm not going to bother trying. I'm just going to keep farming here. Be safe. The wave is pushing towards me and I can freeze forever in a day. And I'll be fine. And actually she's trying really hard here to kill me. I'm just going to pop my ghost and run. And I should be able to run her. Ha ha! <laughs> ghost. I love it. What is this Fiora thinking she's doing? You can't take me out. I could have used my Ragnarok there, but the reason I didn't was because I wasn't looking to do damage to her. I was looking to uh, survive, and it does remove the passive uh, resist bonuses, because you can see here, 10 armor and 10 magic resist. You lose those in exchange for no CC hitting you, and um, bonus damage, which both of which I didn't really need, because she wasn't really crowd controlling me in the first place. She was just auto-attacking me with her ultimate on me. So I, didn't, I need the passive resists, is basically the moral of the story. So it's a good thing I played out the way I did, because it saved my ass. And it's looked like my team's not doing as well as I am, but that's okay. I'll, I'll carry this game. It's, it's, all, it's all set for me. And I'm so close to being level 9, at which point I could upgrade my trinket, but I'm not, which is super depressing. But uh, let's pick up a pink ward here, because I'm pretty strong, and I think I can afford to do that. And let's head back to the lane here. Um, as you guys can see, though, we went to the phage, and now we're getting the Kindle Joe. Excuse me. Uh, reason being for all that, of course, is the Black Cleaver is extremely good on Olaf. It's so good. I mean, it gives you a bunch of stats you want. Health, attack damage, cooldown reduction, so you can spam those axes. It also provides you with the passive armor shred, which is really good because you hit those axes on multiple targets. You shred their armor for your entire team. And the rage, which allows you to kite around, which is amazing. Because, I mean, it allows you to chase if you hit them with your axes or you kill units, etc. But it also works in a defensive manner that you can throw axes behind you and not only slow them, but simultaneously also speed yourself up. So that is so good for Olaf. So incredibly good and helps out a ton. Now, it looks like Fiora went and died again somewhere. I'm not sure where, but from jungle <laughs> oh man you know what honestly guys 
yes, she's bad, but I did not expect that. I did not expect her to be that bad that she would die in the jungle. That is depressing. It makes me feel like a jerk for beating up on her because she can't even handle the jungle, let alone me. So, I do apologize that she's bad. <laughs> and it looks like Cinder's going to go down here again for her second death. But I'll set the turret here a little bit. And me proxy farm a little bit as well, actually. And I'm going to crit the wave out a little bit. But uh, it's kind of funny though, because in my previous Olaf video, which again was in the preseason of Season 4, uh, I ended up going with a, pretty much a full damage build. Went Blade Run King, Triforce, and a bunch of stuff like that. And that build was pretty bad, to be honest with you. But luckily for Olaf, they did release a bunch of Bruiser items, or uh, Juggernaut items as they call them. And they're all extremely good on Olaf. Uh, the Titanic Hydra is amazing, because he always lacked a bit of wave clear. I mean, yeah, he's got his Q, but it costs... Uh, it's got 60 mana cost, and it's uh, I think it's that at all ranks, and so your mana pool isn't the biggest, so you end up running a mana if you continue to spam that for wave clear, so it ends up becoming a much better plan. I was going to hit over the head to assert my dominance, but uh, yeah, it ends up becoming a better idea to get some sort of wave clear items. People got Hydra, but Hydra just felt a little bit too damage heavy, so Titanic Hydra is just a perfect, perfect item. It looks like Tom Kench is actually going on me here, so I'll just kill the Fiora. Oops, maybe I won't. Maybe I'll kill Tom Kench instead then. <laughs> He's not gonna pop his gray health. What a fool. And she's gonna go down too. Alright, well, I'm super fed. I don't really know why he ganked, because the thing is... Okay, here's a little rule of thumb for you guys. If you're playing solo queue, or normals, or what have you, and you have a top laner, mid laner, AD carry, what have you, that is giving the opponent in their exact lane three kills, that lane is fucked. Like, that's, that's it. <laughs> you cannot gank for that lane. The only way that, that lane is gonna be able to be helped is if you 3v1. It's that simple. So if you see your top lane, Tremere feeding 03 to a top lane, let's say uh, Olaf, sure. Don't gank that lane if you're a jungler. Dude, just just leave it be. It's it's done. It's dead. It's a lost cause. <laughs> just leave that guy to complain, bitch at you, what have you. You don't care. Just ignore him until you have your support or your mid laner or someone else to help you gank that lane because otherwise, it's not going to happen. And sometimes that's going to mean you have to lose two turrets in the top lane, but it's better than that than you going and giving him more kills. Trust me on that. Now look at their team here. It's looking like they got a decent amount of magic damage actually, and Fiora's pretty useless. Draven's pretty strong though, so I don't really know. I think I'll go with Mercury Treads though. Seems like the way to go. And I think I'll also build some armor here, so I'll get the Dead Man's Plate next to kind of, uh, I guess, get you guys an idea of how good that item is on Olaf as a substitution item for Randuin's. Uh, Randuin's is actually still pretty good. You could get Frozen Heart, you could get Sunfire Cape, but Dead Man's Plate is basically like those items in the fact that it's, you know, health and armor, but it also provides you with that move speed. And considering, you know, we are Olaf running Ghost, which is extremely good on him, by the way. I don't know if you guys have noticed that, but especially in team fights, you'll see how effective it can be. And yeah, it's like it's super solid on Olaf to have that extra move speed because you can just sprint right into the fight. And once you're in the fight, you're pretty much all good. But getting kited is the problem. But if you manage to get close enough to get kited, you can at least use your axes at least. So getting to that point is the most important part. Now it's looking like my team wants to go for Dragon here. And I don't think they need my help, but in case they do, I'll keep my eye on the minimap. And we'll just clear up the wave here. And I'll just become a split pushing beast, because that's pretty much what Olaf can become. So you can team fight decently well, but you kind of need an AoE item from him first for that to be effective. Like Titanic Hydra or the Titanic, uh, or not Titanic, uh, Ravenous Hydra. You need some sort of an AoE item. Otherwise, his team fighting is just mediocre, I'd say. Otherwise, split pushing is the way to go. Let's get a word there, though. And we don't know where Fiora is. And I kind of feel bad for this Fiora. She's having a really rough time, and it's partially because she's bad, partially because I'm playing decently well, not great by any means, but it's mostly because Fizz ganked her and got her really, really behind early on. That's really what it comes down to. Once I had that level 7 with red buff versus her level 5, the, the game was over for her. So let's go ahead and hit this turret a bit. It looks like she is teleporting here, so I'll just back off. I'll let her clear the wave out, and she wants to chase me out. Yeah, sure, whatever, baby. And this guy's wanting to fight me here. I'll just walk away. <laughs> I mean, I honestly, I could probably 2v1, but I really do, want, do not want them just to surrender at 20 minutes. Again, I just posted a game like that with Diana. <laughs> so, I'll just go back here. And let's see. i thinking the Chain Best makes a lot of sense for me, so I'll pick that up. For the Wardens, or not the Wardens, uh, the Dead Man's Plate. I'll work towards that next. And there's actually a Ward here behind Draven. So, I'm going to TP to that and make them plays. Pop the Ghost. And let's go, Draven. And looks like Lissandra's here, so call my ultimate now to remove that CC. I'm not just going to her. She's obviously going to go to this. Let's go ahead and hit her with another axe. And, whoop, never mind. She looks like she wants to heal herself with her own ultimate. And hit her over the head again with the axes. Can we kill her? Oh my goodness, they're actually escaping us. That is nuts. 
All right, well, they used a lot at least. I mean, we used a lot too, though, but yeah, at least we got something done. Uh, I wonder if the dragon is up. It is. Let's go ahead and take that. I may as well make use of myself being here. We could gank Syndra. Nah. Yeah, let's go for dragon. I'm more interested in dragon. Let's see what we can do with this. I'll let Fiora catch up to put her in the top lane. It actually looks like Fizz wants to take her out. Yeah, I think he will successfully do that too. Yeah, that's the dead Fiora. Alright, let's go back here. Let's pick up our upgraded E here. And it looks like Tom Kench is going for a flanking play. I wonder how that's going to work for him. And I'll pick up myself a Ruby Crystal once again towards that dead man's plate. Once I have that item, my speed it just gets absolutely crazy. And it looks like he's fighting the Tom Kench here. I wonder if he'll be able to win this fight, though. Oh, no, he's probably got that. Yeah, he's got it. All right, well, I'm going to run mid here and see if I can deal with the Syndra. She's pretty low on mana. My ultimate is up, and my ultimate does give me a speed buff, and she's just tanking tower shots for literally no reason. So she deserves to die is basically what I'm trying to say. Let's go ahead and clear up this wave, though, a little bit here, and maybe get this first mid lane tower for ourselves. And she wants to base? I don't think so, honey. I don't think so. Maybe she will still try to base, though. But will I be able to see it? Nah. Alright, well, I'll help get the turret, though. At least get that extra gold for myself for that. There we go. And I'll go top lane. But yeah, I'm thinking after Dead Man's Plate, though, another good item for myself to pick up. And it looks like Fizz stole a blue buff. Uh, another good item for myself would probably be the Titanic Hydra. Considering I am pretty strong this game, and I kind of want to show off how effective that can be, I think I'll get that next. And I'll also give me that extra HP that I do like so much on Olaf. The reason HP is good on him, by the way, is because you want to use your E a lot, and it does have a health cost. So having a lot of HP and not hurting yourself too much makes it extremely effective to build. And I'm thinking it might make sense for me to clear up the blue buff just so we have the timer for it. Otherwise, they'll get a timer and they can get it again. So I like to clear things in the jungle just so I can control the timers and the knowledge of when it's going to respawn and all that. Now they have nothing on blue buff. They just have to assume it's up at some point. And it looks like there's a big fight going on bot lane, but I got no teleport, so I'll just keep splitting here, seeing what I can do. And Fiora's dead again. One and eight. Man. Poor girl. <laughs> poor, poor Fiora. It looks like that's they're actually winning this fight on the... I mean, that's what it's looking like. Nope. Lissandra's going to go down there. And I cannot take this. But it looks like Tom Kench is going to escape by the nick of his teeth. If that's the expression. I don't know what the expression is. <laughs> I think you guys might know that expression, but I don't. I'm just trying something, but I don't know it. And I should just... I should be quiet when I don't know things. Let's go and clear up the mini wave here, though. And this last mini in there. So we're sitting at 155 CS at 18 minutes. Not too shabby, but considering how one side this game has been, at least in the top lane, it should be expected. So I'll go back here and pick up ourselves our Dead Man's Plague, because we can finally afford it. And that should help us out a lot. And in all seriousness, while we are winning this game, and it definitely looks like a bit of a stomp, we, sh we can't entirely count them out, because they do have a Draven. And if they keep Draven safe, and he does seem to be decently strong... I mean, he's got a lot more CS than uh, our Lucian does, so I do think they could actually put themselves into a position where they could maybe have a chance if they keep Draven alive. But it'd be pretty tough against our composition. I mean, the Fizz, the Ari, myself on Olaf. Seems like a pretty challenging thing to do. And yeah, Fiera's gonna go down again. She's just, I think she's really on tilt, honestly. She's just overextending 24 7, making bad decisions. And it wouldn't surprise me if she's, like, begging her team to surrender 20 minutes. <laughs> Yeah, she's salty. That's unfortunate. But looks like there's a fight here. Lissandra and Syndra getting caught out a little bit here. I'll push up the mid lane first. And actually, are you wanting to you wanting to fight me, son? I'm gonna all in the Syndra. There we go. What we do to Lissandra here? And why am I not moving? What the heck? All right, well. Ooh, I almost had the double. Not quite though. All right, well, Fiora's in here, and she's gonna do nothing. No, nope, no, nope, she's gonna do one thing. It's called die. All right. <laughs> so there's three kills for us. I don't know what they're doing, but what can you really do? Let's go ahead and push the turret here. Get that for ourselves, and clear up the mini wave. And all right. What is the plan now, Senor? I guess we'll hit this turn a bit here. Looks like they're trying to hit me though and try and stop me, but I don't think they're going to successfully do that. I think we have ourselves the inhib turret. Yes, we do. All right. But they are back alive and we are kind of chunked out here. We might be in danger. 
But you can see here, every time I hit this uh, Syndra, I'm getting that move speed buff from my Black Cleaver, which goes to show how good that item is on Olaf. And I don't think they know I'm here, otherwise they'd be walking towards me right now. So I should be able to escape fairly easily here. Oh man, but Syndra almost found me, but not quite. Let's pick up the pickaxe here towards the Titanic Hydra, and also grab that long sword. I'll sell those health potions. I don't need them. And I'll go TP top lane. I may as well. I don't feel like I'm going to need it anytime soon anyways. And if I don't use it and we could use it, if that makes sense, I don't think they'll need me all that much anyways. We are very ahead in this game right now. So I'll go ahead here and just crypt this wave. Kill all the little minions. And the siege. Go ahead and use my E to make sure I get that. And of course the health cost is refunded. Even though it wouldn't be that big of a deal if it wasn't. 101 HP. Go ahead and crypt the wave here. And there we go. But at this point in the game, though, I mean, our cooldown on our Q is very, very small. The cooldown on the Reckless Swing is only 5 seconds, and it does get reduced by auto attacks, so it's pretty freaking easy to just spam away with uh, auto attacks and these two damaging abilities. You end up becoming extremely high damage at this point in the game, especially once you get yourself the Titanic Hydra. You see that extra wave through going on. There we go, I'll clear all those out. And Syndra wants to stop me from pushing, and I think... I'll let her stop me, because I don't have vision with their team, and it could be suicide just to run on in there and try and kill her when we don't see the rest of their team. And although I think I could kill two or three of them, to be honest with you, at this point in the game, I still don't think that'd be a wise decision. Let's go ahead and take the dragon here. Dragon makes sense for us. We've already got two, I think, not just the one. The one that I took earlier, I guess. So we'll go ahead and take that for ourselves. Let's see what we can do with this. Yeah, I'm really hoping their team at some point will just group up and get organized and maybe try to fight us 5v5. Because at this point, we've just been picking them off and they're making crucial errors in little parts of the map. And it's not nearly as fun as when you group up. And it looks like they're actually grouping up right now, trying to catch up Fizz. And they're going to get a lot of damage down, but Ari's going to come in there and look at the damage my team is doing. Versus Draven, who's going to go next? Let's pop my ultimate here and go on in here. And there's going to be a kill onto Tom Kench. And their entire team is just going to get wiped across the floor. No contest whatsoever. That is nuts. All right, well, let's see if we can get this mid lane turret for ourselves. Or not mid lane turret, but mid lane inhibitor. Not going to hit Syndra with that just yet. We should be able to hit this inhibitor up enough to take it out without anybody stopping us. It's just Syndra, and she is not doing enough damage for me to be concerned. I keep trying to hit her with those axes to harass her, but I'm not hitting a single damn one. All right. And, yeah, I mean, we could continue pushing. Hello, there's the charm. That's not going to be enough, though, because we're not in range for us to really do anything there. And the blue buff is up. We do have the timer for that. They probably don't. Lucian got the bot lane turret here. Fizz is going to get the minion wave. Let's just get ourselves the blue buff for Ari, I guess. What more can we do? Alright, it's all yours. And I'll go back here. Looks like Lucian might be getting caught out here by the Tom Kench. And actually, Cinder's going to pick up the kill on Fizz. But Braum's going to clean it up? No, no, he's going to get the assist. The dot from Fizz, I guess, took it out. So I'll go ahead and grab that. The TM of course. And almost have myself the Titanic Hydra, which would be a lot of fun on Olaf. Because once again, I mean, with Olaf, comparing the two Hydras, this one gives you lifesteal, of course. The other one gives you uh, it's extra HP instead and a bit less damage. But frankly, you don't really need the damage. I mean, you're, I mean yes, damage is helpful, but it's not necessary that you have that much. And wow, what is their Fiora doing? I'm not looking to really kill her, but just tossing an axe her away seemed like a fun idea. And is she going to get away? Okay, no, she's not. But yeah, of course, you don't really need the extra... What's the, oh, what's the term called? The extra damage. And you don't really need the lifesteal either, because you already have lifesteal from your W. It'd be kind of overkill to have both, in my opinion, at least. And just having the extra A away from your passive on the Hydra is really nice. Now let's go ham here onto Syndra. We should be able to pop our Ghost, pop our ultimate, hit the Q to slow her. Never mind, she's going to flash, but I'll continue chasing her, because my Ghost is still active. And hit the Axe. No, I'm not going to hit the Axe. All right, well, I burned a lot to try and get to her, and I just could not do it. But I hit that axe at least. Draven looks to be splitting bot lane. But uh, I think I'm just going to go over take their wolves now. <laughs> and actually it looks like there's a fight here. I didn't realize there was a fight. Braum's in the fight here. Lissandra's in here as well. Can we get onto Lissandra? I think we can. But she's going to pop her hourglass. Alright, there's one. Can we get onto the Fiora? Oops. Yeah, I'm not hitting any of my axes. Man, I suck. Alright, we hit one onto him, I think. No, not quite. Man, I didn't hit a single axe in that entire fight. <laughs> Damn, I suck. 
All right, well, Fiora's dancing around with low HP. Just can't hit her non-moving target with my axes. Man, I suck. All right, well, let's just continue clearing the wave here, I guess. And Draven's come back in here. If we can get the axe on him for the slow, we might be able to take this guy out. There we go. Lucian's gonna pick up that one. Let's clip the wave here a little bit more. And, oh, hello. Tom Kench's on the backside with a blue buff at that, too. If we get the auto attacks and the Q, we can. And the, the gray health's gonna come out. What's going to Syndra, actually, here? Or maybe just Fiora. And the lifesteal coming out from my W. Keep me alive. Well, Sandra's going in, apparently. Man, we're really overstaying, but we're kind of actually doing alright here, so I'm not really all that worried. But I should be. <laughs> I would really want to kill Syndra. I tunnel vision for her so bad, but oh well. I'm not really concerned. I got myself a Titanic Hydra now, and that's going to help out. Oh yeah, we overstayed for sure. We didn't even damage. Oh, we damaged this one a little bit, but not enough. And if that minion kills her, I will laugh. Okay, it didn't. But what I will do here is I will sell my flask now. And buy the upgrade trinket here. My pink ward is still active, so I'm not going to replace that. Although it is in a pretty bad spot that's not really going to benefit us much. But frankly, I don't think we're going to need it. I'm thinking for my next item here, guys. I actually don't really know. I'm thinking maybe Maji would make sense. Because Cinder's getting pretty strong. Lissandra's going AP a little bit here. And Ma is pretty damn good on Olaf, because of course, the Hex Drinker itself isn't too bad. Is it not even recommended? That's dumb. Uh, but yeah, the Hex Drinker gives you the extra stats here, of course, the magic resist and damage. And the shield is huge. Uh, but when you get the full item, the Ma, of course, extra damage from that pickaxe that it builds out of. But also, the passive on it is that as you get lower health, not only do you have your own passive because you the extra attack speed, but you also get now extra damage when you get low. So getting low health is actually beneficial to you stat-wise, but... You know, it's also too risky towards your life, but who cares about that? It's all about doing damage, right? So my team here is going to fight here. They're going to pick off... How does her repost block that when she's facing the other way? What was Riot thinking? <laughs> that makes no sense at all, but uh, she's going to go down there. They already picked off Syndra. So here I come. I'm on the way. Draven's on the side. He is definitely going to get chased down to die, but he is going to juke the Braum Q. But I'm coming in now, and yeah, he's, he's, he's a gunner. I'm going to try and get on to, I guess, Tom Kench. Get the stun off with the Braum passive. And let's keep autoing away on this guy. He's going to eat me here, but I'm not concerned. He's not going to throw me into their base, I hope. Come on, Axe. All right, well, Fizz is going to go down instead. I think my Axe might have actually gotten him, but that's okay. Uh, looks like Syndra's back up now. Let's go ahead and fight her. Got him. But holy crap, there's so many people here. Alright, well, <laughs> I'm getting kited. I unfortunately was getting slowed constantly by Fiora's E and then Lissandra's abilities, and I couldn't hit my axes because I suck. So they're going to kite me out, unfortunately, and get me killed. Having my ghost or my ultimate there would made that so much easier, but unfortunately I had neither at my disposal. My ultimate was kind of pretty soon, though. And once I hit level 18, the scaling core induction for my runes would have given me 40% CDR, meaning my ultimate would have been available sooner, but that's okay. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, let's hit that Hex Drinker, man. That seems like a solid idea. Get some magic resist to deal with these two. Because, yeah, she used an Unleashed Power on me, which did a decent amount of damage, actually. So, the extra magic resist will definitely come in handy. And look at the damage Lucian just did with that double shot. Excuse me. Uh, the Shiv doing a lot of damage there. It looks like Ari's going to creep top lane here. Fizz is going to get bot lane, I guess. Nope, I'll get bot lane then. And actually, Lucian's going to get caught out here. Yeah, he's definitely going down on that one. And then we have this Titanic Hydra. I don't know if we just... Wait, did we just get this? No, we've had this for a while now, actually. Brain fart. Let's go and clear that out. It looks like, looks like they're actually grouping mid here. They might put up a fight here. So let's see if we can group up. Fizz is finished off the dragon, I think. Yep, he's finishing off. We're going to need some help here. Because we... Me and Braum cannot do this. Yeah, this is not possible. So we need Fizz, Ari, and... I mean, we don't really need Lucian, but it would be helpful to have him as well. But I think we'll be able to fight them before... He shows up. So I'm just going to stand behind them here, trying to distract them, slow them up a little bit, be a nuisance. But I cannot dive into them on my own. And he's actually going to eat me here, which is actually going to stall my survival here. Now let's just go into these pools. Alright, the Sandra all coming out here. The Axe going to come out and take her out. The Draven's going to go down next. Can we get onto the Tom Kench? Looks like we can. And I'll just auto away on this pool. And that gray health's gonna come out, but I think we can still take him out. Yep, got them axe onto him. He is going down. 
and that is going to be almost an ace. Fiora lives, but the rest of us managed to take the people out, except for Ari. Ari went down, unfortunately, but that's not too much of a price to pay for that great fight that we just had. You know, I'm really glad, actually, because like I was saying earlier, their team isn't completely lost. They weren't too far gone. They couldn't come back in this game. And to see them group like that and to try and come back, it puts a smile on my face. Because in most normal games, people just give up so quick. So frustrating <laughs> for recordings. People just give up. So I'm really glad these guys actually stuck with it and tried to make this game work for themselves. Well, Sandra's going to go in here. Let's go and dive. Just do as much damage to her as we can. She's going to pop her hourglass. Let's time our, our, our axe into there. There it is. And Fiora's going to try and make plays. That's not going to happen. There's a double kill for me. I'm stunned, but I'm going to get out with just a bit of HP left. Going to hit the axe onto Tom Cash to try and slow him out. And the stun is not going to come out from Braum Passive. But it actually will. And, oh, the gray health just barely saves him. All right, let's see if we get this first turret. All right, there's one. We get the number two. Looks like we can. But Tom Kench going in. He is going to pick up one kill. Can we take this guy out now? And hit him over the head with the axes. He is going to go down to me. Yes. All right. And I don't think he killed. No, he killed Fizz. Right. That's right. Because he flashed in for the auto attack. So that's going to be the game here, guys. Hopefully you guys like this game. I'm actually quite stoked with that because it originally looked like a 20-minute surrender, but it turned out to be a pretty great game. So hopefully you guys did like it. If you did, make sure to drop a like rating and subscribe for more videos coming up soon. And I'll see you all on the next one. Peace out.